Yo, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all viewers across South Africa, and welcome to The Price of Fame. I'll be your host, Lunga Chuka. So The Price of Fame is a podcast that is focused on the, on the real life stories of the journey to success from the moment of realization of one's purpose or gift. In these conversations, we aim to shed the lights on the hardships, sacrifices, and the mindsets that our guests had to attain and have to go through to achieve the current situation of their career. These are their stories. We actually need like a thing selector. We need to get that what's name sound of, of law and order for that. These are their stories. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So tonight's guest is none other than one of South Africa's multi award winning actors. You've seen him from his early works of uh, Dallas and White Pipes. He's also featured in the Ellen Pakis movie. And you also know him for one of his famous characters, Calvin on Isidingo, and he's currently on St. Worcester. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the screen. Please go crazy with the likes and the shares, and please welcome on screen, Maurice Page. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> what the intro. <laughs> How are you doing? You see, you doing? Thank you, you so see much what, you see what, you see what your intro has done to me? <laughs> <laughs> Brought the house down. <laughs> wow, was that like a TV or something? <laughs> wow, okay. I'm good, I'm good. That's yeah, no, power. I'm good. <laughs> uh, thank, you, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank you for joining us on um, the Price of Fame. And I know you get the whole thing, you know. I just want you to be raw as possible. Tell us about everything. We really want to learn from your journey, you know. Don't hold back on anything, any um, embarrassing moments that you want to laugh about now or anything like that. Maybe you were scared or something, any challenges. We're going to get deep into that. We want to get the real stories, okay? But before we get into uh, that, yeah. let me ask you, how has 2021 been treating you, my brother? Uh, I must be honest, 2021 has been very, 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 very good and very loyal this far. Uh, it has not disappointed. Um, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy about the, tw about the number of 2021. Honestly, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a person that complains a lot about things, you know, and uh, not even the situation that we went through. But I think 2021, uh, for me this far, has been awesome. I've been blessed yeah. with it, yeah. So, yeah. Cool, man. Awesome. Okay. Let's dive into your story. We want to know who you truly are. We want to know what has built your actual character to become the person that you are today. So we want to take it all the way back. We're going to go back, way back. Way back. back. <laughs> so we want to find out, like, where it really, really started. Well, like when you when you actually, uh, like the whole passion for acting actually started when you, when the spark hit you. Where did it all start for you? My man, I must be honest with you, you know, um, it started for me at the young age, um, which like really, I think I was still at, at, at high school. Uh, yeah, we were in high school. Yeah, it was a back and forth, forth situation. I grew up in Heidelberg, Cape. So it was a back and forth situation between Cape Town and, and, and Heidelberg. And at the time I was going through something, you know, and uh, I think when I went back to Heidelberg, that's when I actually started taking the acting like on a serious level and note, and I started to dive into it. Obviously, I had the support, and I grew up with uh, a great acting background with the, with the Davids family, Goliath Davids, and me and Crystal, we, we, we grew up together, me and Crystal Theodore in Heidelberg. So we kind of, you know, we were kind of groomed under, the, under the, the, the umbrella of how to act, you know, so we didn't get really um, the, the acting 101 school of the situation back then. And, uh, man, you know, I was a clown from school days, you know. Funny enough, I was always, I was crazy about the funny, comi uh, like, comical stuff that I had to do, you know, because that was my yeah. thing. I was, a, I was a clown at school, and I love comedy. I love it when people laugh at me. And the first time when that comes from is when I got thrown into the deep to play a, a, a part 
of a guy, um, the play's name was Samayur, it's an Afrikaans play. We performed it at a festival in Oatswurring at a time. And I got thrown in the deep. Um, this one guy, he got sick. Um, his name was Leon, well, he is Leon. He, he got sick and I needed to stand in for him. And it was a week before the time, before the competition. And yeah. man, they throw me in, get to know that you learn the lines, get to moves and down or whatever the case may be, you know, challenging. And yeah. boom, I hit, I hit it. The first thing before I got the award was I found out that people actually stand up and clap hands for being funny. That was my craziest moment. <laughs> yeah, I could not understand it, and it was. Hey, so how old were you at this moment? Uh, I think I was I was 13, 13, 13 wow. or fourteen at a time. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> fourteen or fifteen at a time. Yeah, and uh, and then I won best supporting actor. And since that time, I was like, I need to be on stage all the time. And I juggled in between the rugby and, uh, you know, the sports and, and the stage. But stage was the place that I wanted to be. And I never stopped, you know. And then, I, obviously, I got the opportunity to go and study. And um, from a personal point of view, you know, um, I couldn't study for more than a year. And yeah. then I just started within, within that year. I was like to myself, nah, man, you know what? I, I love this too much and I can't let it die. I need to start looking out for myself. And that's when I got myself an agent as well because I knew my grandma wouldn't afford to, for me to go further to Pretoria because I got, you know, I got an opportunity to go and study, but I know there was no money. And yeah. I got myself an agent that very the year, the, or the year after that, and um, I think I got myself an agent on a Wednesday and the Friday I got my first job and I've never stopped working ever since. Nice. So, you know, and here I am today. Wow, you're blessed, man. Like, um, and you said yeah. that you've been going back and forth between Heidelberg. Is it Heidelberg and Cape Town? Yeah, Heidel Heidelberg. He sorry? Heidelberg in Afrikaans, Heidelberg. Oh, Heidelberg. Okay, so we'll say Heidelberg. Yeah, we so we between Heidelberg, Heidelberg yeah. Cape Town. You said that you were moving back and forth. Were you doing acting in yeah. Cape Town as well or just Heidelberg? With your agent? No, no, no. I was, I was, I was with my mother at the time in Cape Town. I was staying and going to school here, but you know, some situations happened down in Cape Town, and then I went back to Heidelberg. Oh, uh, okay. And you just pursued your yeah, acting, yeah. and then what point did you come back to Cape Town to pursue acting? Yeah. When I finished school, when I finished my matric down in Heidelberg, I actually came back to Cape Town and I started at Northern College. Okay. And uh, me, me and Theodore Yankees, we we studied together. Um, we were in the same class, and that's when I actually, you know, when when things started happening for me, and then a year after that, um, like I said, I got my agent and I started working. And you know what? The funny thing is, my very very first TV work I actually got to shoot and was advertised for Engine. I got to shoot it in Heidelberg in my hometown. <laughs> How yeah. crazy is that? Yeah, I made my first it. appearance on TV. I shot my first TV appearance in Heidelberg as well. Yeah. I mean, you must have been like some kind of um, local celebrity, eh? Early in your in your acting career. I mean, in, within your community. Nah. No? No, not really. No. That was Christo David. Not me. <laughs> I was I was I was I was the odd one <laughs> on the sideline. Wait, did yeah, you know about I your was, I was, did they know about yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yes, yes. I, I was always, you know, but it was never that the popular thing because Christo at the time, he was kind of the youth celebrity, you know, because he, he starred in, in, in Honor Devils at the time. Yes. And it was on SBC2. So yeah. he was, he was the, yeah, he was the local hero there from there. Okay. Yeah. Well, with that being said, did you, like, as a young actor in that time when, I mean, you go, both of you guys are pursuing acting, but, like, everyone is more focused on him, like, as you're saying now, and they didn't kind of, like, really show you the same kind of love. What kind of challenges did you face within your community or within family? Or did, were, were, your, were your family very supportive of your career? Or, like, were people, like, difficult with you? Or were you trying? Was it also, like, 
or was it ever like in the industry was it a challenge for you to get like work because they kind of like they were like narrow down the opportunities for where you guys come from or or, or do you have any challenges like from the community not at all hey eh? our community i down in heidelberg is very supportive uh, whether oh. you get a small part wherever, and it, it was never that thing. It was there was never jealousy involved there. Eh? There was never a part of oh, he's the star. Yeah, let's groom him and whatever. It was never that situation until today. Heidelberg is, I I take it it's my it's my capital of everything, you know, and yeah. and I'm sure for the other guys as well. So so there was never our community has always been up until today. They're very supportive whatever we do, whatever it is we touch on. They behind us. They they support wherever they can, and um, even within my family, you know, with their families, you know, it was always that support structure from both sides. It was never the thing of yeah, let's just go with the one in situation like that. We never had it, and we blessed actually that it was never that situation up until today. And um, when you when you were in Cape Town, uh, I believe did you stay in the Cape Flats for some time? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Let me just play so like, and, and instead of me. Let me just play and represent. So um, here's yeah. a question that like, um, so in the Cape Flats, like Mitchell Spain or so, and uh, so you mentioned yesterday and there's lots of areas within Mitchell Spain. We usually face challenges like gangsterism and drugs and some more gangsterism and a lot of more drugs and peer pressure. And uh, do you, did you, in, did you face any of these challenges? Was it affected by you? Were you affected by it? Yeah. And, you know, you, I think, I think, I think you know, it, uh, those kind of things, it comes with the territory, you know, if you're moving within those environments and areas, it comes, you know, you know peer pressure is there. But it's, for me, I, you know, luckily, I'm a great-grandchild. You know, my great-grandma raised me and then my grandma. So they, I, I was brought up with morals and respect and, you know, self-conscious thing. And always they have choices, you know. So I was yeah. always, I was always the one, you know, that no matter what I get involved with, yeah, if I knew I can end up in the wrong place or end up in the wrong situation, I yes. wouldn't go with that. You know what I mean? But, you know, those challenges were there, but it was never hardcore, never hard one-on-one -on -one situation where I was deep, like involved in situations like that. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you have to deal with those people. You have to deal with those things, you know, because it's there, it's around there. But I never let that keep me from where I know I was headed. Yeah. And it's, yeah. look, um, like your career sounds really amazing. And, you know, and if like when I look at your bio, it just sounds like so many highlights. Were there any times where you actually doubted your craft or you doubted where you're going or did you any, any face some kind of like confusion in your career at some point? Uh, you know, that actually happened two years, three, two, two or three years ago. But I didn't doubt it. I just felt like it's time for me to move on. Okay. But move on as in behind the scenes. And I started directing. So oh. it actually, the, the, the opportunity, yeah, the opportunity started for me at Isidingo when they gave me, um, you know, um, when they gave me training for multicam. And then yeah. that's where my love, because I, I actually found out that I've got more a creative eye than actually than what I'm an actor. <laughs> so I believe yeah. that I'm not a very good actor. And and and, and that's that's the only thing. Yeah, and that's the only thing that started to like that started a doubt in my mind that uh, it's time for me to get out of acting. You know, I need to stop acting because uh, I need to start concentrating and focus on my directing skills and start growing on that side of things. You know, but. As soon as soon as you know opportunities come that I want to act in, I was like, yeah. okay, let me go for it, you know. <laughs> so, so I think so I think it's, it's it's almost like a it's like a wake up call thing, like it's almost time to make that shift, but not yet, yeah. you know that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But like, um, what what's the problem with pursuing both? Can, can you pursue both? Like like you're saying, like you, maybe you focus on more on creating your own projects and those kind of things. But when opportunities come and be like, oh, I have time for that, you know, and you can juggle the two. Can you pursue both or is it yeah. uh, a good idea to do so? Um, I am. I'm busy in the process to actually pursue both. And, and I, I can do it. I can do that. 
I, I, yeah, and I can do that with the projects that I want. But in the meantime, you know, I still living my craft, what I what I love doing, and that is acting, you know. But at the same time, I also start learning and skill myself within that field to start getting involved with the directors and the directing world and from the creative things. So I'm training myself at the same time while still living my dream. Yeah. And um, yeah. I mean, you, you spend a lot of time on set and like you've been to so many um, networking events. I mean, you, you've kind of, you've you experienced the proper fame life. And we on the other side and most, and most people that are still um, aspiring to get there, um, we always just see the nitty gritty, like the glimpses and the glamours of everything. We just see the best moments, the best foot forward. Are there any challenges within what that theme specifically has brought to your life? Um, like, are there any things that you can't do now because you are so famous, because you're on Marie's page? Are there things that um, you would love to do, but because, you know, it's a, and feel free to share whatever you're comfortable sharing. We don't want to get you in trouble now. <laughs> but is there anything like that that people do not know, which goes on behind, um, behind curtains, you know, that is uh, very, very yeah. real and something that actually built your character in some way? Yeah, you know, there's always this thing, and I'm and I'm sure you will find it as well as as in what you are busy with in in your world. You know, it's you know politics is always get you you trying to get away from it, but it follows you. You know, it's always yeah. there to break you down. And I'm and I'm the, the, you know the type of politics uh, that 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 want to destroy you as a person, your character, because yeah. you know you obviously have to face some challenges within that. But I always say, and I always believe that. You know, it's there, but you don't have to get involved with it. Yes, face it, but if you get involved with it, automatically you switch your character role within this industry because that hole is this big and it just waits for you to fall in, you know? Yes. And that's what politics does. As soon as you start paying attention to, to, to things that it's, that's, doesn't really it's not relevant to what you do, like with acting, you know, then you should make, then you should make a choice. Do you want to be yeah. the, in the political side of the acting world or do you want to just act? Do you want to become the best actor or do you want to yeah. become famous or whatever it is you want to do? Then it's a choice that you have to make, you know what I mean? Mentally. And those are the things that I always told me in terms of the challenges within the industry that we face. I never get yeah. involved with those things unless it taps on my shoulder and I have to get into it and say, okay, fine. Now I see, but I don't get into the depth of things. And, you know, like you said, now the fame in South Africa, there's no such word like that, man. I don't understand how people can still say they want to be famous in South Africa. There's no such thing, you know, yeah. people that famous, they work twice as hard as the person there with an ordinary job. Yeah. It's yeah, you know, because they need to they need to uphold that that standard of things, you know, fame. You yes. know, and, and I I don't think South Africa has been born in that thing of fame because we haven't experienced it here. We haven't. Yeah. And we and I'm talking about you know all the people, all the guys, you know, all the famous guys that they call them famous. They they haven't experienced it. We want to act the part, but we can't. We we will never. While well, we're not there yet, you know. Yeah. And that's why I'm. That's why me personally, I don't believe in the word fame. It yeah, everybody uses it and it gets used. You know, they are you famous because you're on screen, you're on TV and stuff like that. Yeah. But. You know, for me, that's only, okay, my work that I do makes myself more, um, you know, gave, give myself the exposure for a lot of people to see my craft, but yeah. that doesn't add the title as fame in my head. Yes. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you put it that way because I was going to say, I think it boils down, <clears throat> sorry, I think it boils down to perspective, how we look at fame, or what we consider to be mm -hmm. fame you know because um some would say like no i'm not where i consider myself as successful so i wouldn't call myself famous but they probably well known and people like they have like so much followers and people appreciate yeah. where they are now in the journey but to them they only few steps in the journey so they're like no i'm not famous just yet so um i know some yeah. people like 
Um, so it, I think it kind of like boils down to perspective, if you would agree on that, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, no, totally, totally. And on your journey, have you had like um, any mentors that have guided you or did you do this all on your own? Were there mentors that came in certain parts? Is there any mentors that you have now? Or did you do this all on your own? Yeah, man, yeah. You know, um, yo, it was Kevin Smith, man. I can't think that guy enough you know i i i followed him since a young young age on tv uh i always used to watch him and then i got the opportunity to work with him on a sidingo and then so many movies or and short films and theater stuff that we've done afterwards you know and within that period of time he was my mentor weird enough you know he when i came on a sidingo the film the first day he took me on you know he showed me the steps and you know he was the one that told me never go longer than 10 years at Isidingo, if you know. And he's, he was always that person behind the scenes that used to talk to me and stuff like that. And then obviously, yeah. you know, my other, my, my lifetime mentor is my grandma. Yeah, my grandma, you know, I, I, I look closely to what she has done and what she has been through and um, her struggles and stuff, you know, the stuff that she used to give me as into what she went through and how to do things and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, those are the two people that actually, you know, carried through, carried me through. And then obviously my grandmother's daughters, my, um, my two aunts, you know, that's not with me today anymore. Um, but yeah, man, I, those are the people that has actually stood out in my life since a young age that I know, ah, I'll follow you. I'm going to be you one day. One day yeah. is one day. Yeah. yeah. And um, are there any, like, were your, like, um, international and national, like, superstars that you really, really admire? For example, if you, like, see a Denzel Washington is starring in this movie, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Okay, what, what's the yeah. title or what? Yeah. Are there any artists yeah. that stand out to you that way that really inspire of you? Of yeah. course. There you mentioned the name, Denzel Washington. <laughs> he's, very, he's, my, he's number one. And then there's Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Yeah. Those are the three guys that I watch very closely in fine details with the acting skills, the stuff they do, the stuff they touch on. And, uh, but I kind of shifted because, um, you know, back then I was very in detail with the acting, the style and how to deliver lines, how to connect with a line, how to connect with the word, your breathing how your presence is without saying a word. So there were, those are the things that I looked at when, when I used to look at Robert De Niro and, 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 Robert and, and uh, Denzel Washington, then, you know? Yes. But then my, kind of, my focus has changed and it moved into a direction where I know I want to do comedy and action. Who's standing right. out and who's doing the best? Yeah. Who's doing that best today? And there's only two people in your... Dwayne The Rock, Dirk Johnson, and then there's a Kevin Hart. You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. looking at those two elements to kind of bring, uh, to put into my South African flavor as into what I want to create. So I'm working very hard on my body. I'm working very hard on my skill set. I'm working hard on on uh, my technical stuff, you know, with weapons, the use of weapons yeah. and, you know, shootings and, and, and stunts because I believe in doing my own stunts. So those are the two guys that I'm looking at. Oh, what are they doing? Yes. I give myself two more years. Yeah. Those are the guys, man. No, that's awesome. That's really awesome. I'm also a huge fan of action and comedy movies, you know, and I would love to be in a superhero movie, you know. Um, I feel like that those yeah. are one of my favorite movies, you know, and all these, where they do all the fighting. Do you know a bit of martial arts? I think I've seen a couple of posts of you in the ring with Christian I did some I did some well. MMA. Yeah, oh, okay. I did some MMA. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. You know what? That's just... also, that was also fun. Sorry? No, I'm saying that's just a, a cool to add to your skill with or towards acting. I mean, same in the journey that you're trying to go as well with the action. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very important, you know. And I, I mean, you know, we don't have to do it as a as a profession. But if we pick up the skills, if we learn or just to get the basics done, because, you know, in acting, I always used to say, you don't have to know the whole part because 
that's the editor's job. He needs to make you look good. <laughs> you just need to act yeah, good yeah. and know and know what you do. So yeah. so so it's so I'm I'm going with a thing. I want to know a little bit of everything, and I want to stand out in a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man. like like speaking of like trying to like um go broad and and expanding on your skill. Do you think is there any roles that you are not comfortable playing that you feel like oh, I don't know I don't know I don't think I could pull that role off or something like that or just like nah you, like you have your boundaries like no I will never I'll never do for example I'll never play a rapist or I'll never play I'll never play this kind of character or do you feel yeah. like uh, it's like a certain kind of niche you kind of like a niche actor? You know me you I'm a very I always used to say I'm a very versatile actor. You can throw me in anywhere. I will do it. I will do it to the best of my ability. But yeah. weird enough that you asked me that question. Me and my partner, we had a discussion the other time, the other day about if I will do, if I will ever do um, a gay character, like yeah. not just being, not just being gay, but you know, the full nine yeah. yards. On, yeah, on yeah, screen, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and I kind of I kind of froze for a second there. I was like, "Oh my word, would I?" Because <laughs> <laughs> I always I always used to be, I always used to believe like, "Nah, man, I will do anything. You can throw anything yeah, in my side. Yeah. I will do it." Come me in, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, um, it's because we we we're watching Ozark at the Ozark at the moment, the series, and 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 there's kind of that situation that happens in the, within that you know, and 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 that's where the question came from. And about it's like, uh, whoosh, I don't know, I don't know, I couldn't answer. <laughs> yes, um, I mean, look, I, I don't blame you, I know, and um, and it's not a thing of being homophobic, also. It's just a thing of like what you are comfortable. No. You know? Yeah. So, um, because I pictured myself and I was like, would I actually ever play a gay? Because I also, you know, I, I also want to pursue acting as well. And I want to also play in action and comedy movies. And I almost like to be uh, versatile, you know, I want to play a good guy and a ba um, bad guy, you know, yeah. a father, someone who's chill, whatever. And I thought to myself, would I like, what are my boundaries, you know? And I was like, yeah. hmm, I don't know, nude scenes. I like, wait, well, nude scenes, you probably just get me from the back. If you're going to do a nude scene, just get me from the back. Um, well, we'll ask you too, what, what is your limits there? <laughs> and in terms yeah. of character, I would like, I don't want to play a rapist. I cannot play a rapist. I'm sorry, I cannot play a rapist. So any future jobs out there, if you want to hand me a script of a rapist, <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, I think I would find it very, very, I can impersonate a gay, per, a gay guy, you know, with, with, like, being snappy and being like all fast and all jokey. But when it comes to like intimacy, I don't know, there, I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable with another beard against my beard. <laughs> or touching another yeah, you know, it's a, yeah, so it's, a, I, it's, a, it's a mental, it's a mental thing. I don't, I, the, the reason why I think I couldn't answer at the time, because I didn't think that far and deep, you know. For me, yeah. it was like, for the first time ever, I doubted the fact that I am versatile. Because yeah. I used to say, and I used to believe, and I used to believe that, no, I, man, I play a gay person. I play, a, I play whatever. It's fine. But when we say, when we say the whole nine yards, <laughs> am, I willing to go, am I willing to go full out on yeah. screen yeah. acting that way? I was yes. like, okay, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I can't answer now. I can't give you a yes. I can't give, I, I can't give you a no yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes, because like what 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 some people do not understand about the craft of acting, it's not just it's not easy, you know. Just like, you don't just switch on and be like, okay, I'm gonna do this. It takes some it takes some time to study the character. You need to understand yeah. the type of character. You need to understand all of these things so that when you play the character, you can come across believable and convincing. Now that's why I believe that. Yeah. That's why I think that's the challenging part where you and I are basically saying where it comes to the intimacy part, we would find it very challenging for us to like really make yes. it um, convincing because it actually makes us uncomfortable, you know, because we it's, it's not yeah. what we do. Yeah. 
we wouldn't go like yeah so yeah i think i would play a gay guy like for example if he was um just single and he had like friends you know these sitcoms like um well and grace something like that you know where there's just yeah. a gay guy he's yeah. single yeah. just a funny character like he's just the life of the party i don't mind that character but don't hook him don't hook him up <laughs> let him have crushes on everyone but don't don't, don't hook him up <laughs> Yeah. 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 No, no, I agree with you. I'm with you on that one. Yeah, it's, it, it, get, it gets a bit challenging. But that's the only time in my career that I ever questioned myself, and it's now recently that it happened. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. it's like I said, um, I, um, early on, I just want to back, um, take it a little back to the one of the questions, like now that you are um, on this level, you know, um, do you yeah. find any challenges? Like, um, I'm not going to say level of fame because pe- a lot of people recognize you and people know you. Do you still have your privacy? Um, do you still like go out to events that you used to go to? That the event, I mean, like just normal events, like to a club or wherever. Do you still feel comfortable hanging out in these spots, or do people kind of like harass you? And then, or, or how are you with it when it comes to that? I know you are chilled with it because I mean, people appreciate you and they're showing love most of the time. But there are times when yeah. you just want to be alone. You just want to walk on the beach for alone. You just want to do things alone. Do you have any of those challenges, or you? Or how do you handle it? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think when I was younger, I used to enjoy it. You know, I used to be okay with it. I used to um, not mind stuff like that. But I think uh, the older I get, you know, the more private private you want to be with your life. And you understand that there's time for everything and there's time and places for everything. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, some of the people, you know, they don't really understand that. So sometimes yeah. there's a challenging part. Sometimes when it's challenging when, when someone just gets you in that awkward moment when you're dealing with something or you're not really there, but you're out in public and they catch you in that moment yeah. in time and you just, you're just human. And then yeah. they put that on you like a tiger with the claws within you. It's like, but... As one thing that I've that I've I think that I got from my grandfather is that I just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yes, care what I mean, people I don't care what people I, I I stopped caring. I, st- I I don't care if you if you wanna think of me, whatever it is you wanna think of me and not see and understand that I'm just also a person, a normal human being, then it's up to you. It's not up to me. Yeah. I mean exactly that, because that's like, how it is. Who says you're in a good mood every time you're out? You know, what if you just had an argument on something or something just went wrong or you just got a bad yeah. text or whatever, you know, and they just come up to you and then now they expect you to be the Maurice. They, um, they expect you to be like uh, the, the actor that they've seen on TV, you know. They just One of the characters, you. yeah. They expect you to match their excitement, basically. They're so happy to see yeah. you. And then they, sometimes they ask yeah. even cat questions, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and 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 those moments are appreciative, you know. It's a, it's a, I, 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 it's, it's a pretty appreciative, but you know, it just sometimes, you know, and I'm not saying everyone is like that. It's just, and and it those moments, it's you know, I do myself, I cherish it as well because it's it's nice for me to to kind of make the next person happy when they see their favorite character or that they see on screen and how they play and all of it. it makes me it makes me really smile, and I'm blessed for that. But it's just some people, you know, they're taking it out of hand. They're so sensitive, like they don't see yeah. another human being. They see just the character and you must be like that. <laughs> and that's, yeah, I think that can be very challenging because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself being like really, really famous. You know, I know a lot of people know me in within the circles that I move in, you know, and within the parts that I'm moving. But. A lot of people still don't know me, but I also like experienced times where I'm just in my mind, you know, I feel like I'm not even dressed like really that well. I'm just make, making my way somewhere in town or with him. Someone real like recognizes me like, hey, Lunga from that show. And it's like, it gives me like a shock, like, oh my. And then you're like, you want to, you know, put on that character or whatever. And it just kind of like throws me off mentally a bit in the head. But like um, speaking about you know, you said you don't care when you get these challenges. A lot of people do not understand this. And I'm glad that you said that we are real people too, no matter how famous we are, all of that. So I think that people, uh, when they look at famous people, they automatically assume that your life is perfect. They assume that you have to be perfect. And whenever you make a mistake, um, 
they assume that they can just be the people like they can just comment on everything. And they also think that your self-esteem is so high because you're so famous. They can actually just tell you, hey, man, you should kill yourself or you should or you look whack in this show or that. Have you ever faced any of those mean cyber bullies? And like, I know you say you don't care about it, but like, does it kind of like hit you in a way where you, oh, then you have to like realign yourself and be like, hey, focus. I'm on my journey. They don't know anything about what I'm doing, you know? So no, any- funny, weird enough, weird enough, I haven't, eh? Weird enough. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually blessed that, you know, most of my characters that I've played, it, 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 the people love, love them, you know? They love the characters that I've played. They, they, my characters never was in a place where it was at a point where they can say, um, like on a serious note, why, why? I, you you know situations like that where you, where they when they see you in public to blame you for a situation it was never like that it was always a light moment and always like yes oh we feel it for you oh yes yeah. you know what whenever when is this going to happen when is this going to happen so there's always yeah. um, my character brought the life in people in their homes all of my characters this far and that's what I like that's really what I love yeah and did you yeah. ever come across anyone who has ever like i know like a a friend of mine he he played like he played like some kind of a gangster in some tv show at the time and Mm -hmm. his character died so now a couple of weeks later i'm out with my friend in public and someone walked up to me and was like oh you're alive (laughs) they actually thought that he died in real life not just the character that he played you ever find sometimes bump people that believe that you are still the character from tv you know, and they like you think that you're actually living that life, and they don't know that there's a difference that you're an actor. Yes, <laughs> bruh. Yes, <laughs> I can, I can, I can talk. I can talk from his dingo stuff. You know, my character used to be in a lot of trouble there. He used to yes. go overseas. He used to go to Mid Africa where he was kidnapped and stuff like that. People believe that stuff, bruh. And even now, with my character, yeah, yeah, on on set, was there? <laughs> yeah. My my character had a seizure, so he you know she had an operation, and yes. people think that I was really almost dead. <laughs> ah, so they're praying for you and they're sending love and everything, <laughs> and you're chilling yeah, at home. Wow, crazy. I'm sure that's crazy, you a good but you know, yeah, no, no. Sometimes you know it it it, it, it reflects on it, and in some like you know people just have that. Thing. And it shows also how closely they get to your character, man. You know, they follow the stories. They very so much you invest- really appreciate that. Yes, yeah. you're very much invested in what you do on screen. And that, that makes my heart also, you know, sometimes like, yeah, sweet. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Um, are we going to wrap this up now because we're actually having a little bit of so we might having some challenges because my selector is actually going through some load shedding so if you guys are experiencing any funny glitches that's probably why we're having this but my last question for you uh maurice i nearly called you calvin now <laughs> maurice um <laughs> okay. where you are now right and looking back to the very very young Maurice who started and who just got that spark what would you tell him what advice would you, if you had to go back in time now, what advice would you give yourself, the younger you? In terms of what was what, what headspace were you in? What did you think your career is going to look like? Now that you know the steps, what the journey looked like, what would you tell him? Would you tell him to relax? Would you tell him to work on something of this, or would you tell him to I don't know? What advice would you, you know? Have? I think. First of all, I don't I don't regret anything as into where I came from and in terms of what I went through and all of that, right? But I think what I would tell myself if I was um, today that if only I didn't drink that much. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> I did not see that coming. Your... Wow, because you had that <laughs> on your face now. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <playing with this? laughs> Don't drink that much. <laughs> wow, okay. Yes, yes. I'm sure nah, there's some. Nah, you see. Nah, 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 you see. 
Nah, I, I think you know I uh, I I would have I, I think I think I would have started I would have told myself why didn't I start motivating people at a at a younger age as in to be a, a, a like you know what I'm doing now what I love doing now I love to speak about the stuff to give back and the changes and to do better you know because my life at a young age started very 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 bumpy very very unlucky very struggle very um just a lot of things that i think no teenager would ever want to go through but when i got to my early um adult world you know i should have looked and took that as a weapon and as motivation to motivate other people to actually see the good in where you come from if I knew what I know that now, and that's what I give people in my motivational stuff. So if I knew back, if I knew that back then, I would have loved to start doing that at the very early stage, man. That's uh, that's what I would have told myself. That's amazing, brother, you know, and I, I love that because in all of that, in helping other people grow, you find that you also grow and <clears throat> yeah, sorry, you transform into another version of yourself that you never thought you could, you know. So this it's like yeah. it's so much in everyone in the, in the whole process. Maurice, it's been a great pleasure having you here on tonight's show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please support Maurice on his social media pages. Let's make the, the entertainment industry within South Africa the best supported by our locals because local talent is liquor talent. Thank you so much, Maurice. May you enjoy the rest of your Thank evening. You so Thank much, you so guest tonight. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. All the best in your career as well, my man. Thank you very much for having me. Salute. Thank you. I'm going to join you on that set soon. I hope so. I hope so. If not, we create our own. But, oh, yeah. Even better. You direct. I yep. am. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Good night. Cheers. All right, so thank you very much to all the tuner, uh, to tuners, <laughs> all the viewers that have tuned in tonight. Thank you so much for supporting. Please follow, um, like I said, please follow our guests on their social media pages. Please like and share and just be a part of the journey. Also, please, if you want to find out about any of my next guests that I'm going to feature on The Price of Fame, you can check me out on my Facebook page. That is Lunga Chuka, the Energizer Funny. That is Lunga Chuka, the Energizer Funny. Also, you can check me out on Instagram at, at Lunga Chuka, as well as Twitter at Lunga Chuka. And please also go to my YouTube page and like and subscribe for more of these amazing videos. That's it from me, and that's it from all of us tonight in the price of fame. I've been your host, Lunga Chuka. Good night. <laughs>